Mr. McBrien, and this is Organic Chemistry 5, Ethers, Esters, Amines, and Amides. So today we're going to work on some other functional groups, get ready to uh, talk about them, get ready to uh, talk about the reactions and the creation of these kinds of compounds. So first off, of course, we have to be able to draw them. We have to be able to um, we have to be able to describe them. So we're going to uh, today talk about mainly the naming of these compounds and a little bit about their uh, about their structure. Okay. So yesterday we talked about carboxylic acids, and here's one here. And um, you might remember that carboxyl group is actually uh, as the name would suggest, acidic. Well, in fact, what we can do is we can take a compound like propanoic acid here. We can pull the proton off and replace it with other things um, to get stuff like esters. So these are organic salts, and there's a condensation reaction we're going to cover in a couple of days where we react a carboxylic acid with an alcohol, to kick out water. And the general structure that we get then is the carboxylic acid with another um, alkyl chain replacing the hydrogen. Okay, and these are named as alkyl alkanoates. So they're named after the alcohol and the carboxylic acid used to make them. So if we take this side of the molecule as the acid and this as the alcohol, which in fact is how they are made, um, R1 will be the alkyl part of the name, and R will be the O8 part of the name. So if we take this compound here, we can have, uh, let's see, uh, one, two, three, propan O8 for the acid portion, and then methyl from there. So it would be methyl propanoate. And this is how we name these esters. So a little example, 2, 4, 6, 8. This would be octanoate because that's the acid side. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 5 fluoro octanoate. Um, methyl 5 fluoro octanoate. A little bit more complicated one. In this case, the alcohol was the was obviously a secondary alcohol that was used to make this ester. So two, four, six, hexanoate, three fluorohexanoate, but in this case we have to specify the attachment carbon here, so that would be propen two ion. So the 2 specifies the carbon at which it's attached. 3 fluorino, uh, fluorohexanoate. Okay, so with a little bit of practice, I think you'll find those rather easy to name. So ethers are a related kind of compound. They're, we can One way of looking at them is they're like esters without a uh, carbonyl. But we'll name them, or we... Um, we'll look at them as more like a water molecule that uh, has each hydrogen replaced by some kind of a carbon chain. Now we name them by simply identifying the two alkyl groups. The smallest goes in front with the suffix, eth uh, with the suffix oxy, and the, uh, where necessary, we'll give the uh, number of the attachment carbon as well. So if we take this example, uh, 2, 4, this will be based on butane. So this would be methoxybutane. We also could specify that it's 1-methoxybutane to... Um, differentiate from the two attachment point. Okay, so let's uh, let's take a little bit more complicated example then. In this case we have two, four, six, eight, nine. So this would be nonane. 
And then we have uh, two substituents to name. We have a methyl and a methoxy. Sorry, not methoxy. This would be ethoxy. Notice that there's two carbons here. So this makes it uh, pretty easy. We'll use our alphabetical order. So this would be 6-ethoxy-2-methyl nonane. Hey, look at that. I got it right. Okay. So uh, go ahead and practice a few esters and ethers from the worksheet before you move on. This will take a little bit of practice, so you probably want to just pause the movie and, uh, and do a little bit of work on that right now. Okay, so welcome back. Hopefully you've got the esters and ethers naming down. Now let's start to talk about amines and amides. Now, we have this ammonia compound, which it turns out is extremely important to biology. It is the same kind of bonding as carbon, except of course it has its lone pair electrons. So it has the same kind of shape, but it's missing the substituent, substituent up the top. Now, just like with ethers, we can replace those hydrogens um, with uh, alkyl chains and begin to build up interesting molecules. So remember we defined primary, secondary, and tertiary previously. Well, these apply, these um, designations apply to amines as well. We can have uh, a primary amine where there's only one alkyl chain attached. And these are uh, pretty easy to name. We simply uh, specify the attachment as if this is an amine, uh, a derivation of amines. With secondary amines, all we do is specify the attachment point for the second group. So this, um, yes, this is one, two, three, propane or propan one amine, but it has a second group on it. The ethyl group is also attached to the nitrogen, so we give the attachment point accordingly. In tertiary amines, all three of the protons have been replaced by alkyl chains. So, um, one, two, three, four, our longest carbon chain is butane. Uh, our attachment point is the one point on that chain, so butane one amine. And then alphabetical order for the other two groups, an ethyl group here and a propyl group here. So uh, amines then, we can name them as that kind of salt. And when we do so, we take that approach. We just look at them. Um, we, we look at them as if they are, uh, ev everything is attached to the amine. But we do have the option to do the other approach of naming them as hydrocarbons with NH2 groups attached. And we've already seen some of those. Okay. So we have the option to name this in one of two ways. First off, we need the longest chain, two, four, six. So this is hexane. And we can say, okay, well, there's a two amine here and a four methyl here. We also could name this two amino, four methyl hexane. In other words, naming it as the uh, derivative of the, of the longest chain exclusively. It's more typical to name this with the amine as a suffix. Okay, so let's take another example. This is a tertiary amine, of course, because it's attached in three places. Our longest chain, one, two, three, propane. Functional group, we have the one amine on that propane. We have a second functional group on that propane, which is the three floral. And then on the amine itself, we have two more functional groups, the N-methyl and the N-ethyl. When we pull all of this together using our alpha order, we have our propane one amine, N-ethyl, three floral, N-methyl. It's really pretty straightforward once you get used to it. 
So uh, just to make sure we have a step-by-step -step approach, though, to it, if we want to name primary amines, identify the alkyl chain, remove the E, and add the location of the amine substituent, if needed, before the amine suffix. So 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. So this would be decane. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So this would be decan 5 amine. Okay, secondary amines. Identify the longest chain, remove the E. Add the location of the amine substituent. Identify the second alkyl chain. Change ane from that alkyl chain to ile and insert the point of attachment if it's necessary. We need the end locator to communicate to the reader the location of the second chain. So here we have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. Decane again. Attachment point 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So decan 5 amine and ethyl. So N ethyl decan 5 amine. Another example, in this case, the propan needs the two point to communicate that it's attaching at the two point on that chain. So it's N propan ion decan 5 amine. Tertiary doesn't really look much different. All we're going to do is separate by a dash and use alpha order for the second and third chains. So we still have our decan 5 amine, unless I miss my guess. And all we're going to say is that we have uh, N ethyl, N methyl, decan 5 amine. N ethyl, N methyl, decan 5 amine. Hey, I think I'm getting this down. If we have multiple amino groups, we always have the option to name just as if they're amino functionality, but we don't always, uh, that isn't always typical. We'll often just use the di, tri, tetra, etc., and make sure that we clearly identify the location of the amino groups. So this clearly is a diamine. So we would have one, two, three, four, five, six. So this looks like hexane. Yes, hexane. And our attachment points are the one carbon and the five carbon. So this would be um, one five, he sorry, hexane one five diamine. Notice we have the suffix at the end, even, even though we've um, got two of these. Now, my temptation, I confess, is always to say that this is 1,5-diaminohexane, right? Um, you can feel free to name it either way. Now, we do have some common names associated with amine functionality. Uh, we've already talked about aniline previously. So it's not benzamine, it's aniline, and name it accordingly. Okay, go ahead and practice some amines, um, and name some of the compounds in the worksheet. Don't forget to use the class notes if that'll help you. Now, for amides. They're similar to esters in the sense that uh, uh, they're derivatives containing a carbonyl, but instead of having an oxygen, they have a nitrogen. So uh, our ester, remember, looked like this. The amide just replaces this oxygen with a nitrogen. Any of these R groups could be replaced by hydrogen, and this is still an amide. So when we go to name these things, then it's similar to naming esters. We'll identify the group on the amine, identify the group on the acid, and add the suffix amide. Right? So we have N-methyl, one, two, three, propanamide. Pretty simple, really. N-methyl, 
and then just be sure that the side with the carbonyl, regardless of its length, will be the base name. So in this case, uh, the length of these, again, is not relevant. So this is still pro propanamide, but this would be propan 2 aisle and propan 2 aisle propanamide. N propan 2 aisle propanamide. So one more with um, both spots on the nitrogen filled. We have N methyl, N propan 2 aisle propanamide. Notice the brackets around propan 2 aisle in order to specify the location. Okay, so don't forget to go ahead and practice those. You can use ChemSketch as well if you wish to help work you through those. Uh, those will require a little bit of practice, so do budget some time. Thanks very much, and have a great night.